in talking about the, the vows of poverty, chastity, and obedience, um, I hadn't a clue what that was about when I was coming in. I, you know, I, it, the one that I thought that was going to bother me the most, and initially did because I was discerning, is chastity. I still had it in my mind that maybe I was going to get married. <laughs> but um, one of our sisters, when I was making my first profession, said to me, um, you think those vows, you, when you go up and you say that you will uh, accept these vows, you think that's the end of it. She said, let me tell you something, sister, you're going you're gonna to learn to live those vows every day of your life. And, and so I think um, in terms of what they mean to me, it's changed over time. Um, I understand chastity about, about being love and love in a way that extends itself beyond me. Poverty, I thought it was about you know, not buying um, five books in the bookstore and only buying one. And it, it is not about destitution. It is about how do we share this life with each other on this planet at this point in this time? And how do we allow others to live healthy and, and strong and not take more than our share of what belongs to people or what, as importantly, what belongs to this earth? Um, and then obedience. I, again, it's, it's not about um, you know, somebody pointing their finger at you and saying you will do this or you will do that. I, I think obedience is again where, um, at least in um, the way we express it ourselves, is as a way to discern not only what's good for you but what's good for everyone else around. So it's not a focus on yourself, it is a focus on what you've committed to. And yes, are there times when um, Someone has to remind you, uh, of course, there's always conversation, there's always a mutuality in the way that we relate to each other and that is expressed through each of those vows.